Hello adventurers and welcome back to my channel. Today I have something super exciting planned. Today we're going to be doing something that you guys have been asking me about for a little while. Today I'm going to dive into the back where I keep all of my kitchen things, pull them out, and share with you what's inside my van life kitchen. Now for those of you who are new, I've been traveling for approximately six years. The first three I traveled with a tent, the last three I've traveled with my van. I have gone so many miles and had so many adventures and I've modified my kitchen kind of along the way based on the amount of space that I have and also the things that I want to do. So inside of this you'll find some really interesting things that I have acquired over time from just kind of like learning what it is that I like to do when I'm personally in my van. You may have a few different things and if you do leave them in the comments below. Of course before we get this started we have to open up the van and um, get out our kitchen stuff. Now I put it right here by the back door because I do have a pop-out kitchen that I can use and it is right here. A little table that pops out and then I can actually cook on this using a heat screen. Now I'll show you what the heat screen looks like in just a few minutes and also anything that I'm attaching to this video that I can find a link for to make it a little bit more convenient for you guys will be in the description. However, don't feel pressured. I'm not asking you to buy any of these things. However, if you do, it's, it's there for you. Just want to make it easy. Now for the purpose of today's video, I'm going to divide the video up into various parts of the cooking experience. So I'm going to start off today with how I cook. How I cook is very simple. I cook on a butane stove. The butane stove that I have, I have had for over three years at this point with no thought in sight of it going away. It's been super consistent and you might be surprised this is one of the cheapest ones that's on the market. Here it is guys. This is it right here. This is just my tiny Coleman camping stove. I picked this up actually at Walmart but you can also find them on Amazon. This is the one that has the attached face to it so you don't have to flip it on and off and it has very simple generic controls. So basically what you do is you put in your butane cartridge you close it up, you lock it into place, and then you turn it on right here. And then everything else is happening on the top. So this thing has been so, so good. And it was an upgrade from a backpacking stove that I used to use from Primus, which I still have and I still use occasionally. However, this is my main go-to. Just this typical, random, super easy to find, Walmart Coleman stove. I think it's super important to note that not everything that you have in your van needs to be the most expensive. In fact, this guy right here, again, super consistent, hasn't failed me, has always been there to cook all of my meals, and I've been super thrilled with it the entirety of its lifetime. Now, I expect this guy to last a while because I've seen old school Coleman's that have lasted for 10, 15, in some cases even 20 years. It's really how you maintain them. And because I always make sure to keep it in its case, it's going to last a lot longer. Now the next thing in my kitchen setup goes right along with that. It's a windscreen. This little guy right here has changed the way that I'm able to cook because on a day that has just even the most gentle of breezes, sometimes it can defeat a good fire on a Coleman stove. They aren't made to have massive winds, but sometimes even the smallest of wind can make your food cook unevenly. But this guy really helps with that. Now there's a variety of different kinds of windscreens out there. I personally really like this one because it has pieces that you can add or take away from it to make it larger or smaller. They actually have two versions of this, one that's designed for the two burner, one that's designed for the one burner. And so let me show you what it looks like and then I'll show you how we use it also. Again, I always keep things in their case because it keeps them in better shape for a longer amount of time. Now this is the guy right here that we have in question. It just looks like some little silvery barriers and then it has these these little hooks that hold it together and you can see it folds out like this and then on the bottom there's a little gap and that's actually where the feet are okay so here is our Coleman stove and here is our windscreen we just fold it out and then as we do we're able to wrap it around the back side 
and then also the sides that have the wind coming. So if I were camping and I were cooking directly out of my van like you see me sitting, I could actually have it this direction and then guard myself from the wind here or I could continue to wrap it around to really get a good wind barrier. I could also turn this so that I could surround it like this and that covers almost the entirety of the entire Coleman stove. And I will definitely say that this one piece right here has changed my cooking experience for the better. Not only can I cook when it's windy, but I can also cook out of my back table back there without burning my bed, and that is so important. So um, I definitely, definitely enjoy this guy right here. But now, let's get into what I cook with. Starting off strong, let's talk about my Ridge Monkeys. I start Started off with this guy. This is just the little Ridge Monkey combi setup and it's tiny tiny. Now Ridge Monkey is well known in Europe and it's because they have a compact design that can actually fold down and take up less space. For example, this is one tiny little skillet but it's also two tiny little skillets and it's also a sandwich press. Let me explain. So Ridge Monkey is known because they have compact designs that can be taken apart. So inside of this, you'll find that it has all of the handles and also tools that it automatically comes with. So you technically could use this as a one-stop shop because it does have a version of a spoon, a spatula, and a slotted like serving thing. But then also you have these handles. Now these handles aren't like the ones that you find here in the US. And the reason why is because they have this little magnet on the end which holds them together so that it stays closed. Now on both of these Ridge Monkeys that I'm going to be showing you, these handles just pop into place like so. And then after you've popped them into place, then you can immediately start cooking with the Ridge Monkey. Now the Ridge Monkey is designed so that you can get an even heat throughout. So you could cook something on one side and then flip it over and cook it on the other side and get a more even heat distribution that also cooks things more thoroughly in a shorter amount of time. And I know what you're saying, why do you have two if one is so good? But I wanted to be able to cook meals for not just myself sometimes, and in this guy, even though I can cook really amazing stuff it is limited to something about the size of my hand so cooking meals for a larger group or contributing to the bigger meal if I am helping out and preparing one dish it would take a considerable amount of time in this tiny thing however I solved that with this other one this guy this is the bigger Ridge Monkey. This is the XL and it is actually the XL that has a slotted pan. So it's pretty interesting to use this one after having used the other one. Now one thing I will say that I'm kind of sad about is this guy did not come with a carrying case. So I clip it together with a little ponytail holder just to hold the things together. And then inside we have the handles that do have their own case inside. It's kind of weird but it works out. Let me show you what else this thing is about. Okay, so like I mentioned, whenever you open it up, you have your handles right here. And again, they have the magnets on them. So on here, this is a larger magnet because it's a larger pan. So you're going to need a little bit more of that grip. So there are two of these. And one thing that I do like that they did with the larger ones is they have a release valve on these that is a little bit easier to use. You can see it's just a pull back and then it automatically relinquishes it. The other one you have to push down and pull out. And sometimes, you know, it's just like any other push down to pull out. It's just difficult. So this guy right Right here huge improvement not only that though they have a steamer tray in this so I could actually make steamed veggies steamed chicken steamed other items and it just fits right in here for storage but then I can also pull it out when I need to and what I like to do when I have used the steamer is to use it over this big side right here and just put my items in and I don't necessarily always even have to close it but whenever I do oh my goodness it's so so good you'll notice there are two very differing 
looking sides here. This one is the wide open one that can be used as an independent full size skillet, or you can use it as a part of the duo here with the slotted side. The slotted side is awesome because you can cook a full meal in this one container. So I can put my meat here, my veggies here. I've made grits in this one before. You know, you can do different kinds of items without them having to all meld together and touch. So this is awesome. And again, this comes apart so you can use them independently. And so that is why I really like Ridge Monkey. Next up, my kettle. And you notice it's a fold down kettle. It doesn't look like anything spectacular, but this guy right here, once it is pulled into place and plugged in using this little plug that I store inside of it is a game changer. Now, a lot of times whenever it's super cold outside, I like to make myself hot tea or I'll make myself soup or something like that that requires boiling water. Now, a lot of times because it is cold, I don't wanna stand outside and use my outdoor kitchen. So this guy can be so handy. Not to mention whenever it's raining, I can pop this out, plug it into a power station and have hot items without having to deal with all of the outdoor grossness. Now, this is something that I found on Amazon and I was very fortunate that the first one that I tried out was a really good one. Now, in order for you to run this, you do need a power station that is over 700 watts. Now, typically if I plug this in to my Jackery Explorer 1000, it runs anywhere between 670 and 700 watts. So you need something that's gonna be a bit hardy when it comes to power. Now using one of these power stations, it's going to use anywhere between seven and 10 watts on average whenever it gets to the boiling stage. And that's really gonna be dependent on the water that you're putting into it to start with. And then also sometimes altitude. I know that sounds absolutely silly, but altitude can affect the rate at which your water is boiling. So that being said, seven to 10% of your battery is going to be gone on a thousand watt power station. With that said, I have talked this thing up so much that most of my friends that have enough power have one because it's really, really good. I've had this thing for two years and it is not showing any signs of going out the door anytime soon. It's been a good hearty kettle that's definitely taken me on a lot of adventures. Now, I like to say the good with the bad always. And there's one thing that might not be great for some of you other than the power, and that is this silicone right here. But I have found Found that mastering the silicone is the main thing. For example, when this gets super, super hot and then you go to pour, sometimes it'll do this little buckle thing that kind of looks like this. The way around that is simply to hold it by the base and the handle and then pour and that keeps it from happening. I had to learn that the hard way as I freaked out thinking that, oh no, my kettle has a flaw. But in fact, it's, it's very easy to fix. So uh, definitely recommend this. And again, I'll leave you the link below because I know there's a lot of them out there that look like this, but I've heard some horror stories about some of them and mine has never been that. So I want you guys to have the link to the best one possible. And in my opinion, this one is definitely it because it is durable and good. Now let's talk about all the cookware and the things that you can eat with. I will say this, one of my favorite things will not be in this video only because currently it is not available and I don't want you guys to get as excited as I am because I'm super excited about it, but it's just not available. You'll know what it is if you've been following my channel, but for now, let me show you what's in this little bag. Now this little bag is something that's kind of an unlikely source for kitchen items. I found this in the hair care section of Walmart actually, and it is a heat protectant bag that you put like curling irons and crimpers and things like that in. However, it's also perfect for the purpose of van life because it's compact, keeps everything inside, and it can withstand extreme heats. This is just a small bag that holds all of the goodies in here, but I'm gonna roll it out and show you what the goodies happen to be. As you can see, there are a lot of tools in this little kitchen spread. Let's start here. This is actually a very good place to start. These are actually just some utensils that I have picked up along the way from Human Gear. Human Gear has some really great utensil packs like these that include various pieces. So in this one, it just has a fork, a spoon, a knife, and then also a toothpick. These are great for not only van 
van life, but also backpacking. And that's why I originally got these whenever I was doing tent camping, because it was super easy to throw in my hiking pack and take with me. Now the next item I have is this. This is just by GSI Outdoors. I prefer longer spoons whenever it comes to the spoons that I use, because a lot of times I will eat like mountain house meals and I need to be able to really get down in there. And the longer the spoon, the less likely I am to get stuff on my hands. But this also has a silicone outside to it so it really can scrape the food and that makes for you getting every single morsel out of whatever container that you're in. Now if you were to use this as you're cooking and you wanted to get things out of a can, same thing. It gets every single piece out of the can and doesn't leave any of the stuff that you're wanting to consume in there. So GSI Outdoors, this one's a super nice one. Now the next utensils I have, I actually picked up in a variety of different places. Places. This is just something that I picked up from Walmart. It is just a regular silicone like cookware piece. This one's a bit more hardy and durable. I wanted something that was a bit bigger because sometimes I do need something a bit larger and so this was perfect but this, 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 and this we're all picked up at Dollar Tree. I wanted to stay with the gray, so I found that they had these little mini ones, and they basically feel almost identical to the way that this slightly more expensive one feels. The only difference is literally the size. They're like a quarter of the size when it comes to the amount of space that you can do things. But I did want to go ahead and have full set of utensils because I do like to cook a lot. This is great for whenever I am cooking meats. I can baste it back in its liquids to keep it nice and moist. I can also use this for putting different kinds of glazes and sauces on things whenever I'm cooking. Of course, this is great for whenever I am baking. I can really get in there with it. I like to have a small ladle just because, you know, you want to serve up some soup or some sauce, this is great. I also always have a slotted one like this and then a regular spoon like this just for normal things that you do around camp. But I also have another one of these and it's a little bit different. It's kind of hard to see. I actually have two of these because I didn't realize I had one and I ended up buying another one because I didn't know I had one. And see, that's where sometimes it gets a little crazy. But going forward on the road, I will only use one of these. That's the interesting thing about van life is sometimes along the way you end up with extra stuff. And the only thing you can do is either give it to someone else or in my case, I leave it at base camp so that whenever I need a replacement, I already have one ready. And I think that that's one of the most valuable things that I have learned personally as I've traveled because again, I do have a base camp so I do have that option. But for those who do not, do you really wanna hang on to all the extra extra stuff, it's just not worth it. It's just clutter at that point. So since I discovered that I have two of these, one of these is going to base camp as, as soon as I return that way. Until then, it's just gonna stay in the bag. But I also have a couple of other things in here that I don't necessarily love all the time. These, for example, I really needed some measuring cups, but I find that in this particular style, even though they're supposed to stack like this, most of the time you find them and they're just like flailing around in some weird way, taking up extra room. So I am looking to potentially replace these with one of those one-stop shop that you can just move the little slide on to get the correct amount, because I think that would be much more handy. Um, these are all things that you don't know though until you put it into the space and then you're like, oh, Oh, man. <laughs> this is another thing that I don't love. Now I have a set of two of these. One didn't make the cut for coming on the road this time because it's not great. This one is also not great, but I picked the lesser of the two evils. And ultimately I would implore you to purchase a quality kitchen knife of some kind a quality one that has a cover on it. So I will be currently looking for a quality knife with a cover on it. But for the time being, I did not have one. So I went ahead and kept what I had with me and it is what it is. So guys, if you're watching this, invest 
in a quality kitchen knife. Other items I keep in here include an actual can opener. Now I know a lot of people prefer a smaller can opener. I have better luck with the old big boys right here. So even though it takes up a little bit of room, it is totally worth it to me to have it. I also try to purchase more of the pop tops so I don't have to get it out. However, it is here for purpose because I've needed it. I keep an additional set of scissors in here. These are just over the counter regular scissors that aren't the best. I'll probably eventually invest in a really good kitchen set also because again, go back to what I said about the knives. I've used three separate pairs of these three of them. And then last but not least, I have the tongs. Now, a lot of people don't think about tongs whenever they're thinking about their kitchen setup, but these have been so handy. I've used them so many times, and I really like to use these, especially with the Ridge Monkey, because not only can I flip things over, but then I can also, on a different day where I'm not wanting to have something that's cooked, I can use this to toss a good salad, and then I can also use it for a variety of other random things, like reaching things behind my cabinet when I can't reach them, with my hands. I know it's silly, but everything has another use on the road when you're in a van. And just like that, again, all of those things in this tiny little container. We love this thing. We encourage you to find this thing. We, meaning me, and all of my stress that it has prevented me from having. <laughs> How many times on the channel have I said I don't like round things because they take up weird space? Well, this item is included in that. I have a regular saucepan. Now, a lot of times people will say, why don't you just have a big pan? Well, I can cook almost everything that I could cook in a big pan in that big ridge monkey. But one of the things I cannot do is have boiling water that equates to enough for me to have pasta for two. So I decided that this was big enough and I tested it before I put it in the van. And so I ended up with just this one generic little skillet. And I purchased it along the way because I really wanted to make some pasta one night and I was struggling to make enough of it. And I said, never again. So this guy right here is just a cheap, regular, small saucepan, but it's big enough for me to boil water and have enough pasta for two in here. In way of other round things that I don't like how they fit, I have one bowl, just one. That's all I need because it's just me. I'm only feeding me most of the time. So the bowl itself is just a literal 50 cent Walmart <laughs> special right here and seasonally they have different colors so you may find this in blue pink lavender it, they sell it literally in every color but gray matched my aesthetic for everything else so we got gray and whenever i'm storing this it goes right in here so that these two things can store flat together and that way i don't have this item plus this item, plus another item. It's just about the storage and how they go together. But this right here, these are my two weirdest shaved items for storage. Well, I say that, but I picked this guy up just because it was a bunny, and so it's been kind of weird too. I'm eventually gonna do a fun video over on the Tri Channel with this, so until I do, it's just been hanging out. It's really, really super cute though, and I would like for it to go with me in the future, so, um. Hi, welcome to the kitchen. <laughs> now let's talk about flat items. Well, flat-ish items. Would you believe it that this is a bowl? This bowl actually folds down flat. I highly encourage you guys to explore collapsible items. Collapsible items are great because this big bowl right here turns into this tiny little thing, literally with just my thumbs, that's it. And so this is big enough where I can actually make a cake mix in here. I think that you've seen on my channel previously, I baked using various ingredients all mixed up in here. I can make a good salad by taking this, covering it with a plate and shaking like this. I can also use this for a really nice soup bowl. And because it is silicone, it works out pretty well with the heat. So flat storage items, super handy handy, super important. I also have some additional containers that actually are in the fridge right now that you can pop out and they're for storage 
they're small. I've shown them on the channel many times. I definitely encourage you guys to look into collapsible storage. It's just so handy in the kitchen and then also in other aspects of van life in general. I have a plate, a regular plate. Again, a 50 cent Walmart plate. I use this as a cutting board sometimes so it's scarred to pieces but it only cost me 50 cents so I'm not upset. I can always replace it at some point. But this is great because it is a full size plate that I can use. It is durable because it is made of plastic so I can use it time and time again so that creates less waste and at the same time if I hit some big bumps it's not going to break which is really nice because you know a lot of people want to bring in what they already have and sometimes the things that they have are glass. I do not recommend glass ever in a van ever. Also in my flat area I have this guy. This is just a standard cutting board slash charcuterie. I got a nicer looking one because we like to do a lot of charcuteries. I wanted something that would look a little nicer but I can also use it as a cutting board. So this is new but I have used it a couple of times and it's been super super handy. Again really durable, not very expensive and definitely something that allows me to do a lot of things because I can cut on this and it doesn't have a porous surface so I could actually cut meats and things like that on there too if I needed to. So this has been really really nice and because it's a flat lay look at that it takes up very little room in this little container. Now these next two things are things that you don't necessarily have to have but are handy sometimes. I have this guy and this guy. Again both are collapsible and if they weren't I probably wouldn't be able to have these items. But this right here is a small strainer and it actually folds down twice so it turns into a nice little bowl strainer right here. This is good because I can dump pasta in here and it'll strain through so I don't burn my hands but I can also put fruit in here and wash the fruit so it gets nice and clean which I think is really important especially considering that you know there's all sorts of weird pesticides that they use on those things. So this has been super nice. I just found this at a local grocery store. I paid way more than I should have but I did find a link on Amazon for something similar at a lesser price so it's going to be below. I also have this guy. This is a little funnel that can pop down and be used for so many things. How many times have we been somewhere and thought, if I had a funnel? Well now I do and it's tiny and it just folds back into itself whenever I'm finished and um, that's it. Now these two items again because they are collapsible can be stored together and take up very little to no room right there. And then we can store them with our other collapsible items. And again, we take up very little room. I think you're seeing the point here of why collapsible is cool. Now on my channel you've probably seen me drinking out of a variety of different kinds of glasses or cups or mugs or things like that. And currently I have one really easy metal cup in this little container. I keep one of these that is very easy to use just so it's a grab and go. I like the metal because I can also take a carabiner and clip it to my bag whenever I'm walking and it just makes my life so much easier if I need something. So this is always going to be a version of this at least in this particular thing. I found this cup on Walmart. They have others in the sporting goods section that actually have lids. I have a couple versions of those kind of in my van in different places but this is something I will always have in my van in some capacity. I also have little chip clips. Anywhere that I can put a chip clip I will just because I use these clips for so many different things. In this particular spot I had a little hole where I could put it into the cup and then put something on top of it so uh, chip clips. They are so good. I would say that this and bungee cords are two of my main things that I use for just about everything random at some point during van life. Now next up I have something for storage. I have a few different kinds of storage things but I wanted to start off right here. These are actually reusable storage bags. My aunt and uncle sent these to me because they saw that I was using a lot of storage bags because I break things down to put them into my food bin so I don't have boxes. So they sent me the ones that I could reuse. The nice thing about this is on the back of them they all have how many fluid ounces will actually fit and then it also tells you a few things about it. For example it's food safe, it's freezer safe and then also you could travel with this in your carry 
carry-on even if you wanted to put your liquid items inside of it. These are approved for that. So this is a multi-use thing. It's just a little Ziploc and it pulls open. You can put your stuff in there and I have a variety of different sizes. Anything from this guy all the way up to a full gallon and again super easy to use, easy to wash and um we're saving the world one piece of plastic at a time. But every so often I fail just a little bit. And whenever I do, this is what I have. Snack bags. Snack bags are my friend. They really are. I like to take food and break it down so that I save space, but also I like to do portions, especially when it comes to granolas, cereals, things like that. So I can take each one of these and make portion sizes so that I can have my meals pre-planned over time and keep everything fresh. I can also grab one of these and take it and put it in my hiking pack and I have a nice hiking snack. So these things I do use and if I could find the reusable ones that are this size, I would be so, so excited. But so far all the ones I found have been slightly larger. Last but not least in this bin, I have butane. Now I keep several additional cans of butane at any given time. Part of this started whenever I went to Quartzsite last year and realized that when you stop off at the last Walmart, they were completely sold out of butane. And then in the stores around town, butane was either non-existent or so expensive. Now an average can of butane that I have been finding is like anywhere between two and six dollars. I know that's a big swing. So what I do is whenever I can, I buy in bulk, I can get a cheaper rate. And then again, I can just bring a few cans with me each time that I hit the road. And then I can re up along the way as I find things. But I also have a nice little stock at home to get me started. So if there is a shortage, I will be good. And also it's part of my preparedness preparing at home. So I do have three or four of these at any given time in my kitchen set up. And um, that's about it. Now again, guys, I know we're all a little bit different. We all like to cook different things. We have different things that we carry as a result of that. But these are the things that are currently in my van. I hope that some of these things are helpful to you and you also see that you don't have to have the biggest, the most expensive things to start your van journey or even to continue your van journey. I've been on the road for a while and a lot of the things that I'm using here have cost me very, very little and are still functioning just fine. Don't be pressured to go out and spend a ton just to start van life. Start off with the things that you already have. And in the cases that all those things happen to be glass, go find some very inexpensive bowls and plates. Again, 50 cents at Walmart. Come on guys, we can all do that. One plate, one bowl. Don't overpack, don't overthink it. And then as you go, if you want to try a few new things along the way, like I did with the measuring cups, then go for it. The worst case case scenario is you have a couple of extra things in your van that you need to rehome somewhere else. If you have a base camp, you can certainly do that there. Or if you're on the road and see somebody who might need something, then you know, you can always be a good Samaritan and hand it over or stop off at a Goodwill or one of the other kinds of stores like that. Anyway, guys, that's it for my kitchen. I hope that you've enjoyed coming along with me and seeing what all's inside, how I use some of the items and finding out a little bit more. I hope this was handy to you. If it was, make sure that you leave a comment below, subscribe and like this video. Till next time, guys, bye.